Greetings. This video is in response to a video posted by Django's Fire about a very simple patch for the Bukla 200. I really enjoyed that video and this is sort of a video response. So what we're looking at is we're looking at basically a very similar setup. We've got here a Mark Verbos 258V and that is a very simple oscillator. In fact, the way we've got it set up, the top oscillator is in sine wave mode. It sounds like this. And the bottom oscillator is also in sine wave mode. And it sounds like that. In other words, just about the same. So right now, both oscillators are being fed control voltages that happen to be the same. And the result is that we've got two oscillators going at the same speed. Now, what the Django's Fire video showed was that we could patch a pulse into a 292. And we could take the output. We could use that pulse to basically um, govern the FM modulation from the bottom to the top oscillator. So we're going to do that right now. So now what's happening is we're feeding via this yellow cable into 292. And that's coming out here and coming back down and going into our FM modulator. So let's listen to this with some FM modulation. And that sounds like you might recognize that. Okay, so where this is going is we can have the FM frequency follow the principal oscillator. And so what we've got up here is you've got a couple of transfer functions. Right now, the transfer functions are identical. The top transfer function goes to the principal oscillator. The second one goes to the FM modulator. And if we change our pitch, and so let me give you an example of changing the pitch. We're going to change the pitch right now here. There we are, up an octave, down an octave, down another octave. Notice the FM and the principal are following each other. And the result is that the wave really sounds like the same family because the FM modulation is at the same ratio as the principal oscillator. So it all sounds natural even when we go into deep, deep levels. It also sounds of a family when we go up to high ones. Now, you might wonder, how is it that I get those cool octave modulations all nicely quantized? And the answer is another Mark Verbos module. This is the 263 voltage quantizer. And I've just got this set to play octaves. We'll, we'll futz around with that later. But in the meantime, the principal thing I wanted to show was how when you keep the FM modulation in tune with the main synthesizer, it all sounds of a family. Now, let's sort of change that transfer function. Let's make the FM synthesizer a constant. Something like that. And now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn that off. So now we're not going to hear the FM synthesizer anymore, uh, except as it affects the principle. And now when I change it, Bring that up. Here we go. Start getting some different sound. If I bring this down a little bit more. Interesting. So keeping the FM steady, or changing the frequency, I get a really different effect on the sound. Now, 
In addition to keeping the FM constant, I could in fact flip it around. So now, now the FM is going backwards compared to the frequency. So as I go up and down, so down here, this is a very, this is a relatively higher FM frequency against a relatively lower principle. And then as I move up, they go backwards. So when I have a high frequency, I've got a low FM synthesis, totally different sound. Now I know what you're thinking, octaves are fun, but let's, let's throw some different sounds in there. And so first queued up, what we've got is, um, I've got this handy dandy function selector. I'm going to listen to the input ultimately of a source of uncertainty right there. So there's my source of uncertainty handing me some interesting notes. And now we can play around what happens if we raise that up. Raise that up. So now we've got just generally higher FM synthesis. Or here we've got a very gentle slope. Gentle lower. That's kind of cool. So you get the idea. We can sort of play with whether the FM follows or goes against, or strongly goes against our principal frequency. That's kind of cool. Okay, so that's listening to some random voltages, but again, just playing the octaves. So instead of just playing the octaves, four five that's kind of cool now take this one step further instead of having the notes articulated exactly with the FM synthesis let's let the notes run free I've got a pattern dialed in to a 250 and so now we're going to listen to that pattern, which comes from... So now we're hearing the notes moving independently from the principle. Finally, one other little note pattern just for fun. Over here. Got an ear drill, module 041, handing us yet another pattern. So we'll plug it in right here. There it is. Now again, the notes are moving with the FM articulation, and we can play around. So we looked at, in detail, what happens when we keep the transfer function pretty much normal for the principal oscillator, but we l change how the transfer function works for the FM modulator. Now we're going to go the other way around. We're going to make the principal oscillator really boring. So let's flatten it out somewhere in the middle. <laughs> The 
principal oscillator is just a simple function. It's, it's variations on a single note. And the change in timbre all comes from the FM modulator. This is a way of hearing how different frequencies affect the same note. Now, of course, we can diminish the extremes in one direction, the other direction. things. Go a little lower. Hear how that affects things. Might be a little low. There we go. So there's that. It's basically just turning random notes upside down. So that's not really exciting. And uh, if we hear it at the high range. You have that. And all high. Pretty much in the middle. all low. Anyway, that's the other side of the coin. And there you have it. A little variation on a theme of FM modulation. Thanks for watching. Take care.